Here are three tubes, and each tube has mainly water in it, and there's another chemical in each of the tubes. An Alka-Seltzer tablet is dropped into each of the tubes, and let's see what happens. Over time, the tubes change color. Why? Let's take a closer look. Inside this tube is phenol red indicator. When the Alka-Seltzer reacts with the water, it creates carbon dioxide gas. In this tube is bromothymol blue solution. When the Alka-Seltzer tablet reacts with the water in this tube, the carbon dioxide gas is created and the tube's color changes to a yellowish color. In this tube is water and some ammonia and some phenolphthalein. When the Alka-Seltzer tablet is dropped into this tube, it slowly over time changes from this pinkish color to a more clear color. This one took a little bit longer for the change to occur. All right, why did the liquids change color? When the carbon dioxide was produced, it turned the solution to a more acidic solution. It had greater hydrogen ions, and the pH lowered. So the phenol red, the bromothymol blue, and the phenolphthalein uh, turned color because of that. Some ammonia is being poured into the original phenol red solution that turned yellow, and when ammonia is poured into this solution, it turns the solution back to a reddish kind of pink color. Ammonia is also being added to the original bromothymol blue solution that had turned more of a yellowish color and see what happens. Some ammonia is being poured in the phenolphthalein solution where it all hadn't turned pink, but where the ammonia is being added now, it's turning into a little bit more intense pink. So why did the liquids change color in that case also? Ammonia is a base, and when added to those solutions, it will change color. Phenol red will turn to the more red, bromothymol blue will turn to the more bluish color, and the phenolphthalein will turn to the more pink side. So at the top of these liquids is more basic, the middle is closer to neutral, and the bottom is acidic.